what we have here is in part a continuation of a long, long standing project where I work with black and white photography using traditional analog methods. The working process is very simple in that I use a simple 35mm camera, standard lens, standard film stock and standardised paper. And there's a standardised way of working as well which mostly involves uh, periods spent travelling in various parts of either this country or various other countries. And the resulting works are perhaps images that are of completely ordinary, everyday uh, spaces where people perhaps don't notice what they see. And the photographs, uh, they, they capture, in a sense, these ordinary spaces. And hopefully through the process of making a photograph, and I stress the word making, they become something new and at the same time reflecting back on not only their, their, their own precise origins, but also in a more generic way, the kinds of spaces that we become used to negotiating in, this, in our contemporary world. This is a new piece, it's called F Fibonacci. Um, it uh, kind of loosely departs from or orientated around this novel written in 1975 by an American modernist author called William Gaddis. It tells the story of a child capitalist who, with the help of his uh, school's resident composer, uh, amasses this vast financial empire and uh, destroys the lives of those who come into contact with it. Yeah. Um, I guess another part of it is also um, Another kind of research aspect of it is a history of radical British music pedagogy from the same period. So it kind of puts those two things in a frame, basically, yeah. It references kind of modernist composition or experimental music practices, both as um, subject but also as method, um, by which I mean, uh, for example, I'm quite interested in, in composers like um, John Cage and in kind of aleatory procedures and often the way that I make films um, deploys um, also kind of elements of chance or improvisation. So I'm quite interested in the relationship between uh, music making and filmmaking, and um, this film continues in that trajectory, yeah. Well, the work that I have here, um, I guess it's sort of a return to the interests that I had um, many years ago. I've always worked a lot with vegetation, um, but I, I did start off making um, fiberglass objects and um, I guess I got incredibly bored with that and uh, I've sort of come full circle again. So um, the pieces that I have here are more return to the use of natural materials. Well, I find it sometimes difficult to differentiate between natural and non-natural because I think they're both similar. So. The piece that I have here, um, it basically has two horizontal, very ancient olive trees. They're about 100 years old. And the two rails which are on top, um, they have a belt drive mechanism inside and they allow the two very young root balls of olive trees, which are about 15 to 18 years old, to endlessly traverse between these two um, horizontal trees. And for me, um, the piece is very much about sort of territory and fixed positions. For me, I see the horizontal ancient olive trees as somehow being entrenched um, in, a, in, a, in a state where they're totally inflexible. But I guess the, the, the sort of beauty of something younger is that it, it has less fixed sort of positions and um, it is able to endlessly move between these two, you know, fixed points. So. We've got 44 monitors here, so it's the most I've ever used, 44 screens. Prior to this, I've only ever used, um, I think, about nine or eight. So this is a big job getting it all together, but this is a, it's a new video, it's called, I'm calling it Final Piece, I've always wanted to call something Final Piece, like GCSE, uh, or, uh, you know, even BA stuff, you know. It's always the panic when you get to the Final Piece, so it doesn't really, I had to, I had to call it Final Piece, and it, and it takes the form of a Q&A between 
someone that likes to think of himself as a, an artist and somebody asking the question. So um, there are two figures sitting at the table, and it just it's just like your your regular kind of Q and A, you know, where the people pour water and they ask questions and they say words, you know, and, and then they show examples of work and the whole thing happens like that. So um, I've always wanted to make this, this film uh, a Q and A. I've always found them so kind of, um, yeah, I've always found them interesting, obviously sometimes um, more interesting than, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's... and so I, I just wanted to, to make my own. It's, this is the kind of Q and A that I'd love to go and, you know, if this sort of stuff happened, I'd go to every Q and A, you know.